Plastic is not recyclable. Oh, you've been led to believe that it is thanks to this, not a recycling symbol, and that's okay. You're not a bad person for being fooled into thinking that plastic is recyclable, but it goes to show that the scam created by the plastics industry worked. You see, in the early 1950s, plastic was the biggest thing in America. Plastic, plastic, plastic. Next to your mom, and following initial movements to save and reuse plastic, the plastics industry simply used the power of advertising to convince us to be a little bit more wasteful. And so, we the people just kept discarding our used plastic with no concern for its impacts right up until the 1970s. 1970 marked the beginning of Earth Day, which sparked the trend of wanting to end single-use items like plastic, which obviously was going to be a problem for the plastics industry. The way they saw it, there were two courses of action. One was to simply accept defeat and create a more environmentally friendly product, or they could promote a scam that kept people buying plastics without feeling any guilt. One internal document from the Society of the Plastics Industry cautioned, the techniques of cleaning and separating the mixed plastics has not been developed for large-scale economic application. Some were very skeptical, yeah. but felt they had to do it. There was never an enthusiastic belief that uh, recycling was ultimately going to work in a significant way. If the public thinks that recycling is working, then they're not going to be as concerned about the environment. I think they knew that the infrastructure wasn't there to really have recycling amount to a whole lot. And that got me thinking, what about electric vehicle batteries? Could it be? Could it be that EV battery recycling is just there to make us believe that EVs are not as wasteful? In this video, you'll find out the answer. Hello, people of the internet. I'm Nico, a former electrical engineering student, a current Google search user, and hopefully in the future, a successful YouTuber. Let's find out the truth about EV battery recycling. First, let's talk about batteries and why they become unusable after a while. So, inside lithium-ion batteries, which currently are the most common type of battery, there is a mixture of metal oxides and other chemicals. This mixture of ingredients results in a positive side and a negative side, which is then separated by something called an electrolyte. The process of using the energy stored inside the battery happens when the electrons inside the battery move from one side of the electrolyte to the other. What actually causes batteries to degrade over time is more and more lithium ions, these are the charged particles that make a battery work, slowly becoming trapped. That means fewer moving ions that move with the discharging and recharging of the battery. Now, this process happens naturally over time, but extreme conditions such as overcharging and heat can accelerate this process. So, after a given amount of time, which can range from 4 to even 20 years, depending on the battery and its health management systems, a battery will be considered unusable and will be sent here to a battery recycling facility. What goes on here could be a whole video on its own, so I'll give you the simple version. A given battery has an outer shell, maybe made of plastic, and all of the fun and more valuable chemicals are on the inside. But rather than opening up the entire battery pack by hand, the first step is simply shredding the battery. Using various different processes, different parts of the battery will be filtered out, plastic often being the first one. And if you've ever wondered why the statistics will say things like 95% of the battery gets recycled, that last few percent is usually things like the plastic exterior not being recyclable. But anyway, once the plastic has been filtered out, the remaining valuable materials also still need to be sorted, but filtering out each individual material is actually not necessary. Instead, they separate it into two different buckets. One bucket will have the metals, things like copper and aluminum, and in the other bucket will be all of these super valuable materials like lithium and cobalt. That second bucket is often referred to as black mass, and that can go straight to a battery manufacturing plant to be used for brand new batteries. The other metals, like copper and aluminum, follow a similar path of being resold to manufacturers, and it's all surprisingly profitable. 
The cost of producing a metric ton of black mass paste is in the range of $100 to $200, but can then sell for $300 per metric ton. Now, these numbers will vary a little bit depending on the manufacturer and the buyer, but these numbers that I just gave you came from a piece written by the CEO of Lithium Recycling Systems, so it seems to be quite feasible. The truth is that while both batteries and some plastics can be recycled, the reasons for recycling are stark opposites. In the case of batteries, it's a profitable business which then gives an extra supply of infinitely reusable materials to a growing market. It's actually also the closest thing we have to a closed loop system. But for plastics, it's a loop-de-loop -loop or maybe two. The oil and other materials needed to make plastic are spent on production, the plastic is then used, recycled once or twice at best, and from there on it goes to a landfill as the properties of plastic make it difficult to recycle. And while battery recycling is also in part there to help companies dodge the PR nightmare that is mining materials needed for batteries, the only motive behind plastic recycling was to keep people like you and I from worrying about the environmental impacts of the plastics being produced. If the public thinks the recycling is working, then they're not going to be as concerned about the environment. So, if you know someone who is skeptical about the environmental impacts of EVs and the legitimacy of battery recycling, maybe try sending them this video. If I can change one person's mind, then this video is a win already. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more videos where I dive into the impacts the automotive industry has on our lives, then consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind later. If you want to debunk some of the outdated arguments that skeptics of electric vehicles often use, then I recommend this video here. Until next time, people of the internet, peace out.